However, the most important change, in my opinion, is introduced in very beginning of the standard, in the scope description. It informs us that the standard only applies to buildings lower than 60 meters. Pressurization systems are sometimes required in low and medium rise buildings, but in high rise buildings, almost always, the standard requires buildings higher than 60 meters to be designed individually based on numerical analysis or CFD simulations. This is a big step ahead of 1211 part 6, which completely ignored the topic of the stag effect. A quick reminder of what stag effect is. In isothermal conditions, so when inside and outside temperatures are equal, the pressure distribution in the high-rise building is the same. If we pressurize it, we will move the pressure to the required value. Meanwhile, in the winter and summer conditions, air inside staircase moves up or goes down due to the buoyancy forces and convection movements. It causes an even pressure distribution. When we pressurize the staircase, we will move the pressure range, but we don't change the pressure spread, so the difference between top and the bottom pressure is still the same. It is only illustrative graph to show the effect, and we have to remember that it will be partially reduced uh, by the pressure relief damper on the top of the staircase. So uh, how it will look like with pressure relief damper, we can see here on example of 90 meter building. Uh, we can add vertical lines to show our limitations, 30 Pascal as a minimum, and 60 Pascal for a wide, uh, one meter wide door as a maximum. As we can see, if we select air volume for the 45 Pascal to be between 30 and calculated 100 Newton, we achieve even pressure distribution in the isothermal conditions. Uh, it is straight, straight line, uh, but during winter, we have under pressure on the first three floors. It is dashed line. If the fire is there on those first three floors, the PDS would suck the smoke and distribute it throughout the building. Let's check what will happen if we supply more air. As we can see, the pressure graph takes the shape of sail. It will meet the requirements during winter, uh, but it will exceed the maximum pressure during the rest of the year. And the staircase um, will make trap for, for people on the fire floor. So as you can see, designing a PDS in high-rise building is not an easy job. And please know, uh, that we have considered only two weather scenarios and the pretty mild ones, only zero degrees during the winter. So the situation would be even worse with colder winter and the hot summer. You may wonder how is it possible that such systems have so far been designed and commissioned. Two tricks were popularly used. Firstly, there was an unwritten rule that tests were never performed in winter and summer. And the second one is actually hidden in Annex B of the old standard 1211 part 6. Provision B2 stands that, where stack effect is likely to be a significant factor, this may be minimized by operating the pressure differential systems for a period of one hour before testing, so that the external air and shaft temperature can equalize. Using this provision, we should add a crystal ball to the fire detection system. Who is going to know an hour before the fire that he or she needs to activate the system that moment so that it can work properly when fire starts? Safe evacuation is a matter of minutes, not hours. SMI has developed a 
and patented the solution 12 years ago. It is quite simple. We use reversible fans to provide air into the under pressure part and extract it on the opposite end of the staircase. Airflow direction is based on inside and outside air temperature and air temperature measurements. Each fan is dynamically controlled, so they are constantly adapting to the changing pressure inside protected space. Thanks to that, we obtain even pressure distribution in the entire height of the staircase throughout the entire year, just after activation. And this is how the pressure distribution will look like with our flow system. The big advantage of this system is that it can be used for every building height. For the highest buildings, we just have to add unit on the middle of the staircase to cover local pressure drops and the airflow criterion. This is what a report based on mathematical analysis that is required by EN 12101 part 13 might look like. We have already prepared many such reports for our clients. This must include a check of winter, isothermal and summer conditions. We are uh, capable of checking the pressure distribution for particular, particular airflows, supply points locations and all possible temperature combinations. <laughs>